in my messy garage right now, I've got my uh, 59 F100 panel uh, that I'm doing Crown Vic front swap, lowering the truck, uh, trying to make it a little more modern, uh, make it a truck that'll be a little nicer to tow vehicles behind. Uh, the Crown Vic swap is pretty common, uh, been done a lot, and uh, so I'm not really breaking new ground there, but right now, the front of the truck is sitting about, I don't know, an inch or so higher than I would like it to. So I'm currently using the uh, cop car front suspension uh, and those springs. And what I did was I went out to a wrecking yard and I got myself a set of the standard Crown Victoria Springs, <clears throat> the non-cop car springs. I put one in already and it's here in the right front. And what I did was playing around with it, <clears throat> uh, put that in in the right front, got the cop car spring in the left front, and I'm simply looking to see what the change in ride height was with the change in springs. And as I figured, there was no change in ride height. Uh, the cop car spring and the standard spring both hold the vehicle off the ground the same amount. Now, what I did was I took a piece of tape and I threw that tape across the top of those two holes as a reference mark on each frame rail. And then I could measure from floor to that piece of tape to get good measurements from side to side to determine height. Right now I'm 15 and a half inches on both sides. I want to get that down uh, 14 to 14 and a half inches. And so now I'm going to start doing a little guesswork. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these factory springs here <clears throat> and I'm going to cut a coil out of it. And we're going to see how that's going to impact the ride height of the vehicle. The P71 or cop car spring is on the left and the standard spring is here on the right. And what I want you to notice there on those springs is that that cop car spring is shorter, but the coil diameter is larger. That has an awful lot to do with how the uh, vehicle is gonna ride. The spring on the left, cop car spring, has a higher spring rate than the spring on the right. I'm gonna cut the spring on the right, and I'm gonna cut it right up here at this blue piece of tape that I put in place uh, as a reference line. <clears throat> so I'm taking one coil out. And what that's going to do is that can shorten that spring up a little bit, but it's also going to increase the spring rate. It's going to make that spring stiffer. If you're thinking about spring rate, think of it like this. It's basically the ratio between the diameter of the spring and the length of the spring. A short spring with a large diameter can have the same spring rate or higher spring rate than a longer spring with a smaller diameter. So as I decrease the length of the spring, but I maintain that diameter, my spring rate goes up. You wanna keep that in mind anytime you're gonna be uh, cutting springs. You're gonna make it stiffer when you cut the spring, and that's okay as long as you don't get too crazy. We're gonna start with one coil, and how you cut that coil out, entirely up to you. I'm just gonna use a hacksaw. Uh, you could cut it with a cutoff wheel, hacksaw, bandsaw, whatever. Wouldn't recommend a torch. Uh, you don't wanna put heat in the spring. That'll soften it. And I mean, a butter knife probably is gonna take you an awful long time, so I wouldn't do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting. 10 minutes of cutting, not quite done. Probably gonna take three or four more. Okay, so I finally got this dang spring taken care of. Uh, it took me about 15 minutes to cut that coil off and uh, clean up the edge, uh, bevel the end where I made the cut. Um, obviously, you can use power tools to make that a lot faster. I just needed a good workout today, so what the heck, we'll use the uh, uh, <clears throat> hacksaw. Now, right here is the... Uh, shock and spring that I had previously assembled uh, with the factory uh, non-police interceptor taxi spring so they could take those measurements. 
I want to show you something here if you decide you're going to do this. Can you see that little, right there, there's a little tab that I've got a yellow line painted on, and then I've got lines painted on the spring here. Okay, so what that's all about is that tab has got to be in line with the bottom of the strut. If not, the strut where it mounts, or the shock where it mounts into the lower control arm and the top are not going to go into place. The top goes through the housing here, okay, and then the bottom mounts in the control arm here. And if it's not aligned, it's very difficult to turn. So if you're going to do this and you're going to take these things apart, Make sure you line that up before you put it all together. I think the easiest way to get the front uh, coilover assembly out of a Crown Vic front end is to remove the upper control arm from the knuckle, remove the sway bar end link, remove the caliper and the uh, brake rotor, and then allow the lower control arm to swing down with the knuckle still attached to it. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, but honestly, it's better than trying to remove that lower control arm. That lower control arm is very difficult to get out uh, simply because in order to get it out, the steering gear needs to come out of the way because the steering gear is sitting ahead of the bolts for the lower control arm. So to get the bolts out of the control arm, steering gear has to be out of the way and then you've got the room to pull the bolts out. It's kind of goofy. So at any rate, I am going to go take this uh, spring and this coilover, and I'm going to set it up in my compressor, and I'm going to swap these out. So here I'm using a piece of equipment most of y'all ain't going to have. I've got this out in my storage shed. This is an actual uh, coil spring compressor. It's definitely the safest way to do this. Uh, but if you don't have this, you can use some of the uh, more you know, readily available uh, spring compressors. Just know that these springs are mean. And if one of these things comes loose on you, it's probably going to do some damage. So seriously, be careful in this part. Uh, what we're going to do now is apply some tension to the spring and then take the center nut loose and that'll allow everything to come apart and then I can get the spring released and swap them out. So here it is all apart and you see the spring, the uh, shock, and then right here is the uh, top spring perch and that right there is the uh, little tab I was talking about that needs to be aligned with the bottom of the uh, shock. Back together and took the quick measurement and cutting the one coil out lowered the truck about a quarter of an inch, just a little more than a quarter of an inch, not much. So I'll cut another coil out, see where it comes out, and uh, then I'll cut another coil if I got to do that until I get it to the height that I need. Keep in mind, as I cut coils out, the spring rate goes up. The spring rate is going to make it stiffer, and that's going to try to force the truck up. So I may end up cutting quite a bit out of this uh, until I get to the right height. So at any rate, that's kind of what's going on. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, once I've got this side dialed in, I'll know how much to cut off the other side. other side will go a whole lot faster. Uh, and there you go, the lovely cutting a coil to lower a vehicle uh, exercise.